So this is a pattern called the Grizzly King. Uh, traditionally, as we know it today, it would be recognized as a wet fly, but the original writings of it in the 1940s, which was pub published in Rod and Gun, uh, you can obviously tell by the drawings that the fly is more of a streamer pattern. And it was designed um, back in, the, in those days to imitate uh, the large dark green drake mayflies. Uh, I find this pattern in a streamer style to be an exceptionally effective uh, minnow style pattern. Uh, I've never fished it over a green drake hatch but then uh, I can't see why you wouldn't be able to do that um, if you tie them in smaller versions, a smaller wet fly version. See the original pattern um, had some very unique variations to it and I've changed that up somewhat to suit our needs here. Uh, so I'm going to mount up uh, a Daiichi uh, 1750 size 8 and we'll run some 18 aught nano silk on this. Um, and I'll, I'll just start at the eye of the hook. I'll just run turns down, touching all the way to the bend. Get a good base layer on. And at the bend of the hook, we can just stop here. Uh, <clears throat> in the original pattern, it called for an enziform tail, which is basically a duck quill or a goose quill, uh, or a bayet, I should say. And in an enziform, being a sword shape, it should point in an upward direction. So we'll just tie this uh, small goose by it in exactly that way as described so that it sits on top with an upward sword shape. And we'll just tie right to the back of the butt of that by it and then return back to the bend of the hook. Next we'll tie in a small piece of gold oval tinsel. I have a tendency to use gold more so for dark overcast days and silver uh, for brighter sunnier days. And then once we've tied in the gold oval we'll tie in I'm using some dyed olive angora rabbit not angora goat. There is a difference. Um, it's a lot finer a material, it has a lot more fibers coming off it, and uh, as this fly gets washed and used, it becomes bushier and bushier. Um, <clears throat> now you can use the the, uh, the the goat as well, but I certainly prefer the rabbit. Uh, and Angora is one of those lost materials that we just haven't used in a long time. Uh, next we Traditionally, it had asked for um, a barred grizzly feather that would palmer up the shank of the hook. And I have what's called a dark grizzly. And I prefer to keep more of the pattern a little on the darker side as over to a brighter side. So we'll just tie this in by the tip after we splay the barbules back against the grain. And then just lash all that down and in, keep a fairly uniform body, underbody as possible. And then come in behind the eye of the hook, about a 10 mil, quarter inch or so. And then we can start wrapping our body. So first we'll wrap the Angora and we can just run nice even turns all the way up yeah, but I like to build it a bit of a, into a bit of a cigar shape so I'll just do more of an open turn back and then tight turns back up again to just behind the eye books and as you can see there's a very quick cigar taper built into the pattern 
and just by the style of wrapping I've done. And we'll snip off the tag end of the Angora Rabbit. And at this point, I'll throw in a half hitch. And we'll bring the barred hackles, the dark, the dark grizzly. And we'll just do open turns, palm ring turns. And then two, one or two turns right. the tie off point and then we'll tie this off bring the hackle to 90 once you've secured it into place three turns to lash down and then two locking turns and again another half hitch and then we can snip off that tag on the butt end. At this point we'll take the gold tinsel, oval tinsel, and we'll reverse wrap it. Just working our way th easily through the fibers. Keep the spacing you know, fairly consistent. And then tie that off right in front of the, the hackle. And then we'll snip off the butt end of that. So now this fly sort of has to be cleaned up at the front end. I'll just pull any hackles or any fibers of any kind back and just wrap up. material. And at this point it's probably a good idea to brush out any barbules that have been maybe caught. And stroke that all back. As you can see as I'm brushing this you can see the angora starting to to lift out and So once this actually gets wet, it will be very, very streamlined. Now the original pattern calls for mallard flank. Um, and I have a tendency to use a Grand Nashu, which is a late plumage on the bird, fall plumage. Uh, and in the spring, during breeding season, uh, the Grand Nashu feathers uh, are the barring, are the barred kind of a gray brown white um, but they have a bronze edge to them and I certainly like that um, for this particular pattern in the wing. So what I'll do is I'll bring this up to a 90 degree from the stem and then remove that and that's what that's done is matched up all the tip ends and then I can roll this into a wing just by folding it in half and now I have my wing. This now is laid on top where the tips of the wing just come down about halfway down the tail and we'll tie that in Touching turns and build that up a bit just behind the eye of the hook, and then we can snip away the butt ends. And we'll just clean that up a bit. Not to worry on too much on the front end here because it's all covered in with what was described as a kingly crown at the time which is truly peacock curl. And I'll just 
just grab a few peacock plumes. So I've grabbed two peacock hurl hurls here, and um, I'll just tie this in right at the eye of the hook. And then we'll just cover the head, build the head on a peacock curl. And that makes a nice, clean, neat finish. Pull all that back and then tie it off in front. Rip away the peacock curl. Two three knot whip finish, a three turn whip finish, and then that's our fly. I'll use this pattern throughout the summer. Um, definitely use it in the fall when there's a lot of minnow bashing going on along the shorelines, and it, it'll also substitute for a damsel fly. Uh, fish deep in the water. When, during chronomid hatches, uh, right near right near the substrates in, in any of the, our local lakes here. So that's the Grizzly King. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching.